Good morning, boys and girls. It is time for truth, and I am so excited. We're almost into February already. I hope you've been having a good year so far, and so I'm so excited about what God's going to do this year and how he's going to use you to get the gospel further around the world. And so I want you to get your Bible out because remember, how does God speak to us? Through the Word of God. That's right. So I want you to go grab your Bible, pay attention, sit up straight, and we are going to get into an exciting Bible truth today. I can't wait. Can somebody tell me how we speak to God? And I ask you this all the time, but if you're new, we're glad you're joining us today. And so how do we speak to God? Do we go around and go, hey, hello, hello, God. Is that the what we do and scream and yell? And people think you're nuts? No, we pray and ask God, and that's the way we speak to God. And God speaks to us through his word. That's the reason you should take care of your Bible. You should put it in a special place because it's God's word to you. And so today we're going to be opening the word of God. So God wants to speak to you today, boys and girls. And I want you to turn to Luke, the book of Luke, which is in the New Testament, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, the third book in the New Testament, chapter 19. And we're going to be speaking about a truth out there that God wants us to have. And guess what, boys and girls? We have been studying people who Jesus met. Remember? We met a young couple. We met working men. We met an army officer. And we met a housekeeper. Can anybody... Remember who the young couple's names were? It was what? Starts with an M. Right, Mary and Joseph. Man, you guys are so smart. You're sharp. And two working men. What kind of work did they do? Yes, they were shepherds in the field. And they were hard workers. And then there was an important army officer that believed in God, and that was what we talked about. And then there was a housekeeper, because boys and girls, God wants to reach all people, all different kinds of people. And so today, we're going to be talking about someone that is unusual. People didn't like him very much, and he was kind of a mean, hateful man that took from people and stole from people. You say, oh my goodness. But you know what? God loves them. And so we're going to say today about a wealthy tax man. A wealthy tax man. And if you get your Bibles in chapter 19, we're going to find out what his name was. Are you ready? And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief of the publicans, and he was rich. Chief of the publicans, that means he was a tax collector. Not just a tax collector, he was a chief tax collector. And boys and girls, back in those days, you know what? Tax collectors were mean people. They came and took from people. And they stole from people and charged them way too much tax. And here's a picture of what Zacchaeus would have looked like. And you know what, boys and girls? People did not like him. If somebody takes money from you or steals your toys or breaks in your house, would you be happy with them? And then they never got in trouble for it. We have people that are doing all kinds of crazy stuff in our country right now. And it's not right. But guess what? Jesus sees them in a different way. And so Zacchaeus was come and he was the chief tax collector. And the Bible says he was rich because he took and he taxed people more than what was due. And he kept it for himself. Boy, not a very nice guy, was he? And he sought to see Jesus, the Bible says, in verse 3. 
who he was and could not for the press because he was little of stature. You know what, boys and girls? He's like, who is this Jesus? And he went in the crowds. And guess what, boys and girls? He didn't know Jesus. He was lost. When we say lost, he didn't know who Jesus was. He was on his way to hell. He had never heard. He just heard of this man named Jesus and he heard that he was the son of God. And the Bible says that he sought to see him. Can you imagine the people when he tried to get through the crowd and he's this short little guy and they're like, oh, get out of here because he'd taken from them. They were in such poverty. Sometimes they probably went to bed hungry because he took their money. And so he wanted to see Jesus and he could not get through the crowd because of the press, it says. And you know what? Zacchaeus, Jesus knew that he needed a savior. He needed to know Jesus because that's the only thing that would change his life. He needed a savior. And you know what, boys and girls? All people need a savior. Ones that are bad and mean. Ones that sit there and blaspheme or say bad things about God. And maybe there's a boy or girl on your block and they're a bully and they're the meanest person you know and you don't like them because they mistreat people and pick on them. Maybe even beat them up or maybe even steal from them just like Zacchaeus did. And boys and girls, that doesn't mean that we have to like them. We have to pray for them because they need the Lord. And we need to pray that God would give us an opportunity to share the gospel with them. He was corrupt. He was rotten to the core. And he was rich off of other people's money. He was rich. He had a big fancy house. He probably drove a big fancy camel. And he rode through town and everybody despised him. Because he took their money that he had stolen from them and bought these riches. But the Bible says he was bad as all the other people. And the most worst person, somebody you would definitely, we wouldn't like. But listen to what Jesus says, that he sought him. Boys and girls, Zacchaeus was miserable. He knew there was something more that he needed to do. He knew there would had to be some truth about God and he was miserable, even having everything he wanted materially. He had the best bike. He had the best toys for whoever. He had the best of everything, the fanciest cars, all the money he ever could spend. And boys and girls, he was still missing something. And do you know what? The boys and girls on your block or in your school, or maybe your neighbor, they're missing something and they know it because God wants them to know about him. And you are the one that's supposed to tell them. And you have to act like a Christian because people won't listen to you. If I told people about Jesus and I was stealing from people, would anybody listen to me? No, they wouldn't. But let's see what happens. Zacchaeus was seeking Jesus. And he could not for the press. He was so of little stature. He couldn't get through the crowd. They hated him. They were probably elbowing him, stepping on his toes, doing everything they could. And verse 4 says, And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree. And for he was to pass that way. He says, I know what I'll do. I'm going to go and I'm going to get in a sycamore tree. I will get in a sycamore tree. Let me put it over here so you can see it here. Let's move this over just a little bit so that you can see this a little better because I want you to see Zacchaeus way up there in the sycamore tree. You see him right there? And he's looking. He's looking for Jesus because he wanted to meet him. So he knew he could see him from there and he knew he passed right by that way right by the road, and let's see what happens. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide with thee in thy house. 
wait a minute. Jesus tells Zacchaeus, come on down from that tree. Zacchaeus, come on down from that tree. And he says, I must go to your house and have dinner with you. And back in those days, boys and girls, you only went to people's houses to eat dinner. If you were really close and you approved of what they did, that means you accepted them as a person. That means that even though they were bad, you would go and have go into their house. And that told everybody that you accepted that person. And people were critical. And they said, but he's lost. He's sinner. He's stolen from us, Jesus. He doesn't deserve to know you. Boys and girls, we all deserve to know God. We all are undeserving of the Savior. How about you? What if you never heard or your mom or dad never heard and you never heard of Jesus? You couldn't go to heaven. And God wants all people to go to heaven. He said, come on down out of that tree because I'm going to be going to your house. You know what, boys and girls? Jesus Christ is seeking us. He's seeking Zacchaeus. He's seeking People that don't know Jesus Christ is their savior. And listen to what he says. And he made haste. This is Zacchaeus, verse six. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. He's like, oh man, Jesus said it wants to come to my house. I, that's the whole reason I'm in here. I want him to come to my house and eat with me so I can talk to him. I can get to know him. I'm sure he's the son of God. And when they saw it, they murmured against him. The people were like, what? You're inviting Zacchaeus, the tax collector, that old reprobate, that mean man, the one that stole from us? You are, and they grumbled and they grumbled. You know what, boys and girls? A lot of times we grumble about people, maybe somebody that's mean, maybe a neighbor that's not very nice, but we need to be trying to give them the gospel. We need to be trying to tell them about Jesus because Jesus himself told this rotten, sinful man that he wanted for him to come down so he could show himself, tell himself about dying on the cross so Zacchaeus could be a different man. And the people murmured. Do you know when you talk to people or pray for people, especially when you give the gospel, boys and girls, there are people that are going to be grumbling at you talking behind your back. And you know what? We have to just say, is Jesus worth it? Yes, he is. And let God take care of those grumblers. And the Bible says that he was gone to be a guest in a man that was a big sinner. Guess what, boys and girls? All of us are sinners. And let's read in verse eight what happens. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I take anything from this man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. He said, Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. That's what Zacchaeus was doing when he came down. And then Jesus went to his house and he said, I am a sinner. I've done wrong against you. I understand I can't get to heaven on my own. Will you please forgive me? And for cleanse me of my sins. And I know, Lord Jesus, that you're going to die and pay for those sins. And that you're going to be in heaven. And I want to trust you as my Savior. I want to ask you and choose you to be my Savior. And Jesus said unto him, listen what Jesus said to this wicked, evil man. This day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is the son of Abraham, Abraham, he's the son of Abraham. That means he's a child of God. That means he's going to heaven, boys and girls. That means he trusted Christ as his savior. He admitted his sinner. He believed that Jesus Christ died on a cross and he chose him. And listen, for the son of man, that's Jesus, is come to seek and to save that which was lost. You know what Jesus is doing, boys and girls? You know what God wants? He came to this earth to die on a cross to pay for your sins. And he's seeking terrible sinners, maybe people that aren't as wicked, 
but they're still not saved because we all have to come to Jesus Christ the same way. No matter how many things we've done in our life or how good we've been, you have to admit you're a sinner, that you've done wrong against God for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You have to believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and paid for your sins. But God commendeth his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, we were separated from God. He died for you. Even when you, before you, even when you reject him, even when Zacchaeus rejects him, he still already paid for all of the wrong things we've done by the shedding of his innocent blood. And three, you have to choose him. You have to do it the same way as Zacchaeus did. And you know what, boys and girls? Jesus is looking for boys and girls that will help people to know him, to tell people of the gospel about Jesus Christ because they can't help themselves. If Zacchaeus, if Jesus never told him about himself, would he, have, would he be in heaven? No. But the Bible says we're going to see Zacchaeus when we get to heaven because someone told him it was the son of God that told him here. What about in your neighborhood? Have you ever told anybody the gospel? Remember the gospel challenge? Remember the gospel bracelets? Remember the colors? We need to work on that this year. If there's ever been a time where boys and girls and mom and dads and family and friends of yours need to know Jesus, it's now. And boys and girls, I want you to know, God is looking for you. Are you going to join up? Are you going to go join up with the gospel club? Are you going to join up to tell people about Jesus? You can do it. I don't care what age you are. If you know Jesus Christ, you've admitted your sinner, believe Jesus Christ died on a cross and chosen him to be the Lord and Savior of your life, and you've done that, then you can tell someone else. Maybe you have an uncle or an aunt or a friend or a mom or a dad that need him. Pray and ask God to give you an opportunity and start talking to them about Jesus. You know, boys and girls, I have a bag here and I wanted to do kind of an illustration. And you know, this old bloody, nasty rag, ooh, it's really gross. You know, it's kind of nasty to even touch. But you know what? We see people and sometimes they're so wicked, we don't even want to touch them. We don't even want to, we don't even want to pick them up. We don't even want to pay attention to them because they're gross and nasty. And I have this bag and let me show you. This bag has nothing in it. Can you see through there? Can you see my face? There's nothing in there, right there. I'm putting my hand through, right? But you know what? Jesus says we all were like these filthy rags and these wicked people because one sin is as bad as a lot of sins. And you know what? When we give the gospel to a sinner, let's put that down in there. When we give the gospel to put that way down in there and we give the gospel and they accept Jesus Christ as their savior, guess what, boys and girls? Guess what? God sees them like this and it changes their life. Zacchaeus was never the same. And anybody that you help to know Jesus and they ask Jesus to forgive them of their sin and they choose him, you know what, boys and girls? God sees them like this and they're going to be able to go to heaven one day. Boys and girls this week, I want you to think about God, God wants you to give people the gospel. And maybe you're here today and you aren't a Christian. Ask Jesus Christ to save you. Just pray. He'll listen to you. You only have to admit your sinner, believe Jesus Christ died on a cross, and choose him, boys and girls. And if you've done that, go tell your parents. If you understood for the first time today, go tell somebody. And start telling others the gospel. And until next week, keep giving the gospel.